Hello, hi there, I'm Tech Tweed. welcome. So today we're going to be looking at a device that I already reviewed. It's the Amberlick RG35XXH, which is a dumb name. I called it the Zazbizzle in my review, but I don't want to confuse anyone today, so we'll stick with 35XXH, I guess. I was pretty positive about it, but there were some things I didn't like about it. Mainly the stock OS, that's the part I didn't like. But that might be a thing of the past because we have a new OS that I'm excited to check out. It's called Kuriki, which is a very fun word to say, Kuriki. It's a Bado Serra based operating system for the 35XXH and the 35XX Plus. So that's what we're doing today. This is my new 35XXH. I haven't shown this one to you, but I love it. It was sent to me by Lit NXT. That's a company that's sent me lots of stuff and they sell stuff. So uh, if you want a 35XXH, it's 79 bucks there, but they have this Year of the Dragon sale going on right now. So you can actually get this for 15% off. And those guys do free worldwide shipping too. There's a link in the description below. This is the transparent white version of the 35XXH. It's way better than the black one that I reviewed before. So let's fire this up and I'll, I'll show you what the default system looks like. And there we go. So this is how it comes out of the box. It's a very basic bare bones operating system. It, it's not that terrible. It works. However, Amberlick has this pretty locked down and there's not much by way of customization. I don't like the way the systems are organized or the games or lots of the default settings. I mean, most stuff does work. It, it, it's just got a bunch of weirdness and you can tweak it a bit to make it better, but it, it's just work to do that. When you start tinkering with it, you start to see the limitations, you know? So let's do it. Let's do our big upgrade. This also works on the 35XX Plus, by the way, same method. To do this, you're gonna need an SD card. I'll link to this one in the description below if you wanna pick one up. And also while you're here, I guess I can show you my SD card reader. This is my current favorite SD card reader. Anyone into this retro handheld hobby should have a good card reader because losing data sucks. Trust me, I know. This one has a high speed USB-C connection on one side, but also a USB-A connection. So you can connect it to any device really. You can even use your phone to manage your ROMs in a pinch. It's like 20 bucks. I'll link to this below if you need one of these too. So let's plug this bad boy into our PC and get some Kariki on this card, shall we? All right, so this should be pretty simple. We just got to grab the operating system image off the Kariki GitHub. We want the version for the 35XX Plus. And here we need to scroll down and th there it is. It's under assets. It's the .img.gz file. So download that and you'll also need a program to flash the image. I'm going to use Rufus. So here you got to select your micro SD card drive from the device menu and then select disk or ISO image and then click select. And we choose the .img.gz file that we downloaded and click start. And it'll ask you if you want to do it and you click, yeah, man, I want to do it. It'll write the image and then when it's done, you can eject that SD card and we're ready to rock. And here we go. We have our flashed SD card. That was pretty easy. We're gonna, we'll turn this off. Goodbye. And take out the old SD cards from our device. And we'll save those. So this is a, a good thing about the firmware on this device. If you get a new card, you can experiment with the firmware, but you can save the old cards and go back to the old system at any time. So we're going to put this in the left slot, which is the internal storage slot. And now we need to fire this up and let it do its setup thing. That'll take a minute or so to install, I think. Oh, we got uh, music. Uh, okay, that's pretty, pretty nice. All right, that's enough of that. All right, we'll turn this off in the sound settings, which you can get by pressing start. Oh, that's better. All right, so here we are in Bado Serra, and it looks like it's ready to go. Yeah, look at that. They include a few homebrew games. So Bado Serra uses a front end called Emulation Station, and this is my favorite front end. Yeah, you know, on Android, there's Daijisho and Dig and Onion OS on the Mew Mini and Garlic OS on the 35XX. There's, there's lots of different front ends out there. And my favorite front end of all time is Emulation Station. It's just the best way to organize and browse your games, all the options you could ever need to customize any aspect of the experience. So this will be curious to see how well it does here on this little guy. But before we can really test it properly, we need to add our games and BIOS files to the SD card. 
So let's shut this down and put the card back in the PC and we'll add our stuff and then we'll be able to give this a proper test. So let's let's do that. All right, so here you can see that our drive now has two partitions. There's a Botocera partition with some stuff in there that you shouldn't touch. And then there's a share partition. And in here is a ROMs folder where we can put our ROMs and a BIOS folder where we can put our BIOS files. And when that's done, you can eject the card and put it back in your device. And here we go. It's all loaded up with ROMs and BIOSes, everything a retro tech dweeb could ask for. <laughs> now, I I'm not going to have the box art yet, obviously, so I wonder if we can do the scraping right on here. Uh, we'll see about that in a bit. Let's uh, just try a game first. Yeah, good old zombies ate my neighbors. So yeah, the performance is perfect. This is a great freaking game. If you haven't tried it yet, you really should. It looks great on this screen. The scaling looks perfect. No complaints at all. This is great. All right, so it looks like we have some predefined RetroArch hotkeys here. And obviously you'll be able to customize that. You set your own hotkeys. Yep, there's hotkeys settings in there. And you can customize the look of RetroArch in the settings. It change whichever other settings you want. I'm not going to tinker with this right now though, because we have other stuff to test. Let's uh, see what else we have here in the Botocera options. There's just the one theme for now. Let's get on Wi-Fi and see what we could do. Yeah, Wi-Fi is working fine. Connect to my network. Password. One, two, three, four, five. That's the stupidest combination I ever heard in my life! Yeah, yeah, there we go. We're connected to Wi-Fi. So what can we do with the Wi-Fi? Can we use the scraper is the question. I'll log into my screen scraper account here. I, I don't have a ton of games on here, so let's start the scraping and see if this works. And there it goes. Ooh, we're, we're scraping. Uh, this is an early alpha build of this operating system, so some stuff might not work, but man, this is working. Uh, I love this. Oh, I wonder if the theme browser works. Yeah, there we go. Oh, holy crap. We get the themes too. Oh, that's so cool. Ah, there it is. Wow. How freaking easy was that? I mean, why? Why can't Amberlick just give us this? Botocera is free. It's open source. Anyone can download this, edit it, build it up, and compile it however they want. Why does Amberlick always give us these weird operating systems with janky ROM sets and crappy box art? It baffles me that they're not using this sort of setup by default. Man, this is so much better than the stock system. So ridiculously easy too. I mean, you can just flash the image, boot it up, and it creates the folders, copy over your BIOS and games, and you're good to go. All right, so that theme is done downloading. Let's try it out. There it is, Botocera Club. Oh yeah, yeah, I love this theme. Okay, let's try a few more. This one is Alec Full NX. That's a very popular theme, one of the best. A few minor issues with this one, a little bit squished, but it's totally usable. This one is Arcade Planet. It's a nice, simple, lightweight theme. Here's Epic Noir, very popular theme. I, I, let's stick with this one for now because I could spend ages playing with the themes if I don't just choose one already. All right, so uh, I think it's time to quit goofing around and finally do some performance testing. Let's uh, start with PlayStation. That's the easiest to run 3D system. And yeah, that's uh, that's working. That's working really freaking good, actually. Oh, look at that. The performance is literally perfect. Smooth 60 FPS. The graphics are super crisp. It looks absolutely beautiful on this screen and the controls are amazing. Well, that's one thing that I liked about this device was the physical controls. And yeah, they're, they're super tight. Oh, I'm, I'm loving this. Man, what a great way to play PS1. All right, I'm moving along to something a little harder. Let's try some Sega Saturn. Um, no. So this isn't working. Is it just a black screen? The RetroArch menu works, so it hasn't crashed. It's just that the game isn't working. So uh, try a different emulator core here. No, uh, so Saturn's not working. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'll have to do some tinkering around, but I'm not going to bother right now, though. Okay, moving along to Dreamcast. We'll go with the default emulator. Yeah, this is running. Not the best performance here. It's kind of stuttery. But that might be because we're in the RetroArch core, which usually performs worse than the standalone emulator. So let's try the standalone Flycast emulator. 
okay, uh, this it's still stuttery, but uh, here we can go into the options and turn on frame skip. So I set this to a frame skip of one. And yeah, yeah, this is running perfect now. Nice. <laughs> and the controls are perfect. So it works great as long as you turn on frame skip and there will probably be easier to run games that don't need frame skip. That's, uh, this is outstanding. That this is running Dreamcast as well as it does at this price. Let's do Nintendo DS next, I guess. Uh, the controls are pretty messed up here. Yeah, this is uh, freaking weird. Oh, there we go. What button was that? So there's some work to be done on the DS emulator. The controls are kind of broken in the menu. The performance is good. It, it's working. Oh, let's see if we can get the HD resolution applied. Yeah, yeah, there we go. HD resolution and it's still running great. So apart from the controls, everything is fine. It's working really good. I guess this emulator just needs some tweaks to let it be all it can be. I think later I will try to fix this myself. Maybe I can edit the config file or something, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Moving along, Nintendo 64 time. This is another one that wasn't included on the original SD card that came with the 35XXH. So this will be interesting. Yeah, this is working actually amazing. Not a hint of slowdown. The controls are mapped perfectly. Wow, not bad. The, the downside here is that we're in the standalone emulator, which doesn't have save states or any options menu. So you're stuck with cartridge saves, but still, Nintendo 64 seems good to go as far as I could tell. And finally, let's try some PSP. Vice City Stories. How's this gonna go? Okay, so far so good. Works well in this starting area, but I want to get over here in front of the airport because it always slows down over here. Yeah, yeah, it's getting uh, pretty choppy. However, the frame skip is compensating and I'm not getting audio stuttering. So from what I'm seeing here, I'd say most PSP will probably run fine and the hardest stuff will run, but it'll get a bit stuttery. And you can go into the settings and tweak stuff. So you might be able to squeeze out extra performance if you tweak around. Obviously, this screen isn't the ideal size and ratio for PSP games, so just think of PSP as a bonus on here. Maybe your favorite PSP games will work fine, but it's not an ideal way to play PSP anyways, obviously. And real quick, I, I, I wanted to try this. Supposedly, this also works in the exact same way on the 35XX Plus. So let's just slap this card in here and confirm that. Yeah, look at that. It's working. Oh man, I'm so excited. Yeah, so I feel like this is what we've been waiting for, for this device. Yeah, I love the, the hardware. I love the pocket-friendly form factor. Yeah, we don't get many pocket-friendly wide format devices. This is, this is the one. This is really the only choice right now. And it's very appealing as a pocket device because it's flat enough that it actually rides in your pocket and it's comfortable. And now not only is the software like okay, this emulation station is the best emulation software, the best emulation front end that I could have asked for. This is going to transform this device from something that's okay into something that's great. And I'm super excited for the potential here. If you want to try this yourself on your 35XX Plus or your 35XXH, I will include a link to this software in the description. And if you want either of these devices, especially this gorgeous transparent white 35XXH, then definitely check these out on Lit. NXT. There's a link below for that. And that brings us to the end. If you like this video, then definitely check out this video, my review of the 35XXH. There's a link on the screen right now and down in the description below. And you can go watch that now because we're done. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.